back to Fab Little Dish, your cozy little nook for all things food, leisure, and decor. This is my third of my 2024 Easter Decorate With Me series, and I'm so excited for this one. I am thrilled to show you how my Easter Mad Hatter tea party kitchen turned out. I mean, you can kind of see behind me, but you're going to be going in depth into everything that it took to create this magical little atmosphere. So before I get started, make sure you hit that subscribe button. I don't want you missing out on anything coming your way. And also please hit the like button, share these videos. This is such a fun one that I know you're all going to love. So please give share it out with anyone else who loves Alice in Wonderland who might even want to do this for a, a birthday party theme I mean there's so much you can do with it and I hope that you all enjoy and get some really good inspiration from it so without further ado come with me and decorate my Mad Hatter's Easter tea party kitchen with me the first thing I wanted to do is to swap out the roses that I have in the back. I did take down the red because that was for the Queen of Hearts Valentine's Day kitchen. And I actually chose some blue and cream colored flowers. And these are also, these are from Timu. The red ones were from Hobby Lobby and these were from Timu and they were really cheap and they fluffed out really nicely. So I just kind of strung those, kept the string lights up and tried to take everything else down that was Valentine's Day. <laughs> favorite little ideas that was very on the fly and I always put tea towels on this little ladder but I minimized how many I put on there because I wanted to do that confusing Alice in Wonderland sign where all of the the arrows are going in the different directions I had a bunch of those left over from the Valentine's Day decorations and so I just clustered them all together and I think it looks really cute this was a fun one. I got this sticker also from Timu and this is just a vintage mirror that I got from Goodwill years ago. And I mean, it was like $5. So I put the sticker right in the middle and it's just a nice added touch. This was my most daring move in the kitchen because I did not know how it was gonna turn out, but I remembered being in class when I was little in school, I can't remember, maybe second grade, and there was a really cool tree of life made out of con thick construction paper. And it made me think of that to use in Alice in Wonderland to put a Cheshire cat kind of sitting on one of the branches. So I winged this. I was gonna take it all down if it turned out horrible, but it was actually pretty easy. And all of this came in a couple packages that I got, but you could get a roll of this on Amazon. It's just packing paper. And I got, this one was pretty thick, so I wanted to use it and I liked the color of it as well. It was more like a tree branch. And so I started with the trunk and I cut just little slices on the bottom to make it look like roots. And then I just kind of started twisting and twisting. And when I I needed a new piece I would use that as a branch and I kind of just rolled with however it was turning out I wanted to make the branches all kind of going in one direction uh, just so that it was kind of the focal point of the kitchen so I love how it turned out it's it, it, it I think it really perfects the theme and with those flowers and 
the lights. Oh, it just, it looks very Wonderland magical. <laughs> What I use to stick the paper onto the wall, I just use those command strips and I did have to use a couple of tacks just to make sure it was very reinforced in a couple of areas, but mostly I just use those command strips and they did the trick. DIY from the entire theme and I recreated the Alice in Wonderland cake her unbirthday cake that she gets and it looks upside down it's pink it looks like the color of Pepto-Bismol and it's just so cute so I wanted to recreate that for the tea party that I have on top of my cabinets and it is the centerpiece of the kitchen I feel it and it is all thanks to this cake so I took some clay and this is just the the air dry clay and I rolled it flat and then I draped it over the styrofoam. Now I started off with styrofoam. There are different cake rounds and I did cut them down so they kind of got that uh, upside down uh, cone shape, if you will. And I got the just three different sizes from Hobby Lobby and it was the it was a 9.8, so it was kind of big on top. And then I got a, an 8.8 and a 7.8. And I actually also got a 6.8 so i i got four i got four different sizes and i just kind of cut them all down and it looks really nice but you could just get a thicker chunk and then slice the styrofoam if you want and then i use the crayola air dry clay i love this stuff i use it for fake bakes and you're going to see another diy video with me doing some of those and this though i used as kind of the fondant for the cake itself. And so I rolled it flat. This was a tedious task because I didn't want to get it too thin. I was seeing that it was getting too thin, so I kind of had to re-roll it because you want it thick enough so that it doesn't split. But you're going to be painting over it anyways if it splits, but you want to make sure it is fully covered. And I tried to make it as big as I could. I did have to do it in different sections. And it's and then I had to kind of just use my hands and then I found a tool actually to help press everything down to make it look even, but it doesn't have to look perfect. It's an unbirthday cake and it's just gonna come out how it's gonna come out. <laughs> but I think it ended up turning out really, really cute. And you're gonna want that clay to dry on the styrofoam for at least two days before you get started on the next stage of painting it. I use some lightweight spackle and then I put some pink uh, acrylic paint in there and I also added in 
some Mod Podge, and you didn't see me do that, but I, I had the Mod Podge in there um, as well. I added it midway through because that prevents it from cracking. You want to make sure you have that sealant on it, and I use just matte, but you can use the glossy if you want or whatever kind of sheen. But I just you have to mix it real good, and then I just have this little cake icing. A tool that I picked up from Dollar Tree and I just slabbed it all over and just made sure I got it all evenly coated and painted and uh, I let it dry for a couple of days before I went on to the next step. This was a fun part. I had a really cool spiral wax candle that I got from Amazon as a set. And I actually just took a, I, I stuck it into the styrofoam itself. I put it perfectly down the middle, but it's cool because I can light it up at night. And I painted it to be the colors of the candle from the cake in the movie. I also had these little clay I used the rest of the remaining clay that I used as the fondant for the cake and I made the little star and little flowers that are on the cake itself with the icing. So I went over here and piped the icing all around. It's kind of in a weird pattern. Thank you. 
I think it looks pretty close to the one from the movie. Let me know what you all think in the comments. I love to the the cake stand that I have it on. It is uh, the candlestick from Beauty and the Beast and he is barely able to hold it up and I just, I love it. <laughs> and I've had that for a few years now, but I did get that from the Disney store. But let me know what you think about the cake. I, I love it and I want to see if you all love it just as much. And now we're setting up the tea party on top of the cabinets. This is definitely the, the center piece, the eye catching aside from the tree when you walk in, but this is definitely what catches your eye when you first come into the kitchen. So this is the tea party has to be crazy and mad and busy, but also tasteful. So we start off by definitely putting, uh, I love to put runners uh, on the side. I just like that it covers parts of the cabinets and it just kind of makes everything uh, flow really well with the rest of the pieces. And I put out the cake right in the middle and then I started to add little things here and there. I did keep a lot of my trees that I had up from the Queen of Hearts kitchen from Valentine's Day. I took off a lot of the red hearts and put there's little egg stickers that I put on there. The little flowers are another fun detail. I just found those pictures online, cut them out, uh, or I printed them at Walgreens, cut them out, and then we I put them on these tulips that I got for 40% off at Hobby Lobby, and they turned out so fun. I love it. You just feel like you're Alice in the garden with all of those flowers singing around you, so that was another fun little added detail. And then they also had these little mushrooms too that I kind of just added to fill some space. Something that I think really brings a theme to life, aside from that beautiful pink cake in the middle, are the cutouts of the characters because that really sets the scene and reminds you where you're at, just in case you don't recognize some of the other elements. So I made sure to get the Mad Hatter, uh, the hair, his, his, his bunny friend, and I also got just little the mouse. Um, and I also have just the little butterfly that are flying around the bread ones <laughs> those are up there i have the mr rabbit who's late so i just put them kind of all over and i was moving them around a lot too so i had to make sure everything was pretty balanced and i just i i love how it ended up turning out
these are actually Martha Stewart trees from Christmas and I found these little Easter egg ornaments that are made out of styrofoam and they're all different pastel colors. I found those at Dollar Tree so I just put those all on them and it made them look so Easter. A lot of this stuff in the theme is DIY, but I do have some statement pieces and they also make the theme and bring the just the room to life. And I have my main balancing Easter bunny with all of his teacups and he's standing on a teacup. And this is, I got this on Amazon. I know that Home Goods put out a version of it. it. This is so much nicer though, just because it's the painting is so even and it's gorgeous. And it's just, it feels just like quality and I love it. And I believe that it's Regency is is the brand of it and it was it was this was my priciest thing I got this year So I made sure to do a lot of DIYs around it, but then the other two little Mad Hatter Bunnies that are on the Easter cups and and everything I got at TJ Maxx and Home Goods and those are just gorgeous I was so excited when I found those and they really also just bring the theme to life I got these adorable small lamb's ear Easter wreaths with eggs on them from Kirkland's and I got two of them and I just took some pink velvet ribbon that I had on hand and uh, put it all through, I looped it through and then I used some of the, the just the, the, the command strips on the back of my cabinet or in the inside door of the cabinet and that's what I stuck it on and it has been holding up very well and I haven't run into any issues and I just think that they really bring, they just take care of a lot of that white space on the cabinets themselves. favorite cut out the Cheshire cat he looks perfect up there <laughs> and then I jump right over to the other side of my cabinet this is above my coffee bar so it this really 
complements the other pieces from Home Goods and TJ Maxx that I bought with the bunnies balancing. So I have a couple more up here and I kind of clustered these ones over here because they kind of matched a certain color scheme. And the, again, those are just some topiaries that I made from Valentine's Day and just took the Valentine's Day stuff off and put a cute little pink bow. But I just arranged everything here, left a couple of the cutouts that I had from Valentine's Day, Queen of Hearts, obviously the Mad Hatter hat, and then I like the stopwatch. But I, I, I want the bunnies to kind of speak for themselves here. So I think it's, it's really cute and I love making my coffee every morning and looking up at this.
please let me know what your favorite parts were in the comments below and also let me know if anyone has any questions about anything that I did. This was so fun. I loved all the DIYs. I loved just the nostalgic vibes because Alice in Wonderland is everything for me. I did the Queen of Hearts kitchen for Valentine's Day, which absolutely inspired this Mad Hatter's Easter tea party kitchen theme. So I, I mean, and I really, I barely even reused a lot of the stuff that I used for that theme. This was just a whole new, almost fresh slate and it was just, I kind of just went wild. So let me know what you think and let me know if you're gonna be doing any of this for your Easter decor. I would love to know that. And until next time, stay lovely my friends. Thank you.